Hello, my Soccer Universe. Let's talk Conference League. The Europa League video will probably come on Saturday morning because I'm quite busy this Friday. But you know, let's see. Maybe I can put it up late in the evening as well, depending where the time will go. Conference League. Lask again playing at home. Again, not winning. Again, a draw. And it's a little bit too little, I gotta say, that were shown. At least repeat, keep the Austrian honor up. But you know, I would like to see my team showing up and doing something for the coefficient as they have done in previous years. But previous year, not so much. This year, also not too much showing. And it would have been also nicely set up again. Last win in Europe was against uh, Union Saint Julien. Last year in early November, I thought Serge Bruges, another Belgian pawn at home, could work. Nah. Definitely didn't help that the fans were not there as well. And that's one part that we'll talk about. But we also had a pretty big win by Chelsea. We had a narrow win by Betis. We had Fiorentina losing away from home. But, you know, I still think the Fiorentina are very good in this competition. And there were quite a few other interesting results as well. Notably, the Polish teams are doing really, really, really well. So I would say, let's just recap the action from this Europa League match day three. Well, let's be honest. That wasn't much by Lusk. On the other side, you know, that damn ball doesn't want to go over the line. But it's even more damning because you played against a 10-man circle Bruges for an entire half and you cannot get it done and so the hopes of advancing the conference league are not down to a coin flip with two rather difficult away games coming up before you face Vikingur at home a team that has already beaten two of the opponents that Lusk are facing at home as well so yeah I'm not there to really be down on the Lusk team itself because overall I think the performance especially the beginning and the ending stages was not that bad however the complete lack of ideas of how to break down the defense of Cercle Bruges right after the half for about half an hour. That's what really bothers me. This was bloodless and then suddenly they ignite some spark but the damn ball doesn't want to go over the line. Well, going a little bit deeper into the game, first off, there were again no organized fan chance because some of the organized fans did not attend the game because of the high ticket prices. The situation is an ongoing one, an evolving one. They said if ticket prices will be lowered for the next season, then they will come back for the last home game and last game reduced slightly by five euros some of the tickets. I was thinking of going I just didn't see it working out well uh, for me with Friday morning, you know, having to get out earlier. For that reason, for now, I've decided to not do it. Maybe for the last home game, I think there's a chance. I really want to see a, finally a conference league game as well, because then I have seen all the UEFA competitions. Be it as it may, this definitely did not improve the overall, how to say, atmosphere in the stadium. But I think it was not bad either. The other interesting part is that Sergei Brusch coach Muslic is actually rooted in Upper Austria. He was coaching Ried a few years ago, not very successful, no win. But his family is actually living not too far from Linz as well. So kind of a homecoming for him too. So that was definitely an interesting part. The game started out with some good chances for Lusk. I especially I actually want to mention a shot by Horvath that seemed very dangerous but then when you look at the placement it was maybe not too inconvenient for the goalie to save. There was also I think one by Schul where he didn't get his shot off but you know nothing really tangible where you say oh this was a big chance except the one from Horvath obviously. And then there was a phase of the game starting around the half hour mark where Sergei Bruce had actually a little bit of um, initiative and actually created some dangerous chances but it was also self-inflicted because multiple times Times Lusk seemingly had cleared it and then on the next touch Sergei Bruch advanced the ball forward again. I think there was a free kick where Seamantel had to save. But the game really turned then when Denki, the only player of all the players that were fielded that couldn't get a yellow card, he got two yellow cards and one was a sending off. All of them kind of jumping up with a leading elbow. Gotta say the second yellow card was a rather rather rough one. Bulgarian referee to gave it and I thought yeah this might be now the advantage that Lusk will need 
also knowing that we have some trouble breaking down an opponent. And that's exactly what it proved. At the halftime, Muslic made three changes to kind of keep it a little bit tight, more tight defensively. And going forward, yeah, they were kind of dangerous with this Nazinho guy that he brought on. And not much coming from Lusk. Even when Taui and Entrup came on at the hour mark, I think it really changed and once Stojkovic came off and Flecka came on, because Flecka is really a player that actually can give you a little bit more verticality. It's not a decent Stojkovic, I actually think he's playing quite well, but um, for a little bit more offensive input, Flecka is probably the better player. And it came then, Taui had him having two really good chances. One I think was saved, one he just puts the shot wide, then they really tried everything, but what I didn't like is, for instance, that Berisha, with all his motivation going forward and, you know, his great spirit, he is overestimating himself when he takes a shot. I mean, there's a ball that is bouncing and takes a shot and goes far over. That's not what you have to do. A little bit smarter there. The other really annoying thing was that there was one good attack move. Again, Inisha Batai, where they really played over the field and Jules, I think, plays it over to Horvath. It's a little bit too steep and he sees the leg of and takes a dive. That was a real good attack. I mean, if you get there the goal, that's the can opener and you score goals. As I said, Ball didn't want to go over the line. The biggest chance actually of the game was fortunate offset, which was just before the half when Schul hit the post and then on the rebound even couldn't convert there as well, but it was a very acute end game. So yeah, two home games, two points, one away loss against Ljubljana. It's not a good record for Lask at the moment and I would say chances of advancing not that high. You definitely need to get a win at Banja Luka. You probably need to get the win at home at Reykjavik. And it might not hurt to get something from Fiorentina. That one, tall order. Well, while I was hoping more from Lusk for the Austrian coefficient, Rapid is actually doing everything to keep the Austrian coefficient really high. They go now to Moldovan champions Petro Kup, not Klub, Petro Kup. Weird, but whatever and win 3-0 and it was a fully deserved win Bola gave them an early lead in the 13th minute yes there were some few chances by Petro Kup in there but Burgstall then adds a brace I think I like the third goal best when there was a deep ball by Grigic then seemingly Burgstall was offside he was not and he really nicely lobs it over the goalkeeper in the 79th minute to finish the game but even second goal is a typical striker's goal the only downside for Rapid is that there were two injury related substitutions one in the first half to Bola and then also Bellio kind of fell over on the midway line. Let's see whether these are serious injuries or not, but Rapid sitting really good now in the Conference League, sitting in fourth place and more or less having the next round booked already. On the other hand, Fiorentina managed to lose 2-1 at Apoel. Despite dominating the game, Apoel strike twice quickly before the half. Donis and Abangna, just before the half time, especially second goal, they just couldn't clear the ball. Yes, Ikone can pull one back, but it's too late. Fiorentina suffered the first defeat in the Conference League campaign. Bet is also avoided just an upset, beating Sally at home 2-1. They had more of the game, but it took forever to break them down. In the 75th, Nathan gets finally the go-ahead goal for Betis. But then Juan Yonetio, with a beautiful goal, gets an equal for Sally, who then pushing forward and are caught out on a counter-attack that Juan Mi in stoppage time converts for Betis' winner. Betis not very convincing in this conference league. Meanwhile, Chelsea were toying with Noah, beating them 8-0. It was 6-0 at the halftime with a 10-minute span where they scored the first four between the 12th and the 21st. It's 12, 13, 18 and 21. Seems like everyone can get their goals. It was Joao Felice scoring a brace to make it 4 and 6-0 respectively. And then Nkunku in the second half adds two more. And I think this could have been double digits if they really would have won it. Another remarkable game was Dior Gardens beating Panathinaikos 2-1 at home. Despite being down at halftime, Djuricic giving Panathinaikos the lead, but then right after Gulliksen equalizes and Hümmert in the 72nd gets the winning goal. There was also quite a crazy game in Copenhagen, where Copenhagen may have dominated for most of the game. Copenhagen still without a win, but they're down in the 26th minute to a goal by Kenny. Then Chiaka gets the equal as a final in the 79th minute, and then from the kick-off, there is a long ball forward where the goalie and the defender for Copenhagen are not on the same line, and it's Piontek who can run through on an empty net. 
Still, three minutes later, Giacca gets a second goal for Copenhagen, but it only ends in a 2-2 draw. Probably too little for them as well. Meanwhile, on their maiden journey through Europe, Heidenheim get a 2-0 win at Hearts. Both goals come in the second half through Conte and Schopner very late on. I also want to mention the two Polish teams in the competition who are also riding high. We had Lega getting a 4-0 win against Dynamo Minsk. That was kind of expected, but Jagiellonia, Białystok, their champions, they are really good getting a third win with a resounding 3-0 over Molde. Watch out for the Polish teams this season. During this quick summary, you've already seen the standings. We have six teams being perfect still, with, of course, Chelsea leading the way with a huge goal difference. But, you know, Legia, Jagiellonia, and Rapid, Guimaraes, and Heidenheim are also up there as well. However, does it mean that those uh, teams will also be on top of the table at the end? Well, let's look at the expected standings here. And you see, of course, Chelsea is uh, set on to win this league, probably even with a perfect record. And Rapid right behind. That, to me, is a little bit surprising. I actually think it will be one of the Polish teams. Or Heidenheim. Heidenheim is probably the underrated team in there. Fiorentina, with the loss, of course, cannot go as high anymore, but probably will still get the bye. Most importantly, where do we find Lask now? Oh, they dropped more points. 27th now expected and only a kind of less than a 50% chance of advancing. Still, the hope is there, but you see on every 6.4 points, which kind of means you have, this is a win, this is a draw. You need to get two wins. You need to get two more wins and then you have a chance of advancing, I would say. But, you know, let's see. And if you look at the overall favorites, yes, it's Chelsea's to lose. Fiorentina, yes, had a little blip still very much set on to qualify. Betis and Heidenheim in there. Ghent is a team that we have not talked a whole lot about. But, you know, Belgian teams can be quite good. Rapid sitting only in seventh. Lusk still in 17th spot. But you see already, it's also low because their chances of advancing are not that big. But we have to say that all these perfect teams are more or less qualified for the next round, which means they're, of course, riding high in the ratings and rankings. Because the table is so vast, it's sometimes really hard to pick out which games are really of interest or of importance in there. Well, I can tell at least one. Boris Banjaluka against Lask. This is a really, really big one because both teams will need to win, especially Lask would need one as well. But there is one fixture that kind of sticks out in addition, which is Heidenheim against Chelsea. One of these teams will not be perfect anymore, or both of them, if it will be a draw. Fiorentina have to play Paphos, now being in an almost must-win situation. Real Betis played in Lada Boleslav, and then we have Rapid hosting the Shamrock Rovers. It's a green and white duel. Anything but a win for Rapid would be really a surprise. Also note that there's one game being played on Wednesday, and Vittorio Di Gimarej have to go all the way to Astana at an early kickoff. Well, as they say, hope dies last, and this is how I approach Lusk's chances as well. I think a win at Banja as I said, is now really, really important. Performances need to pick up. On the flip side, yes, I need Lusk to get points, because in the Conference League, points are easier to make than in the Champions League, and the Austrian coefficient is really suffering. Now, if I look selfishly only at the Lusk perspective, maybe going out of Europe might not be the worst because, you know, you can then concentrate on a cup, you can concentrate on the championship and maybe make for a push further on where I think a Europa Conference League playoff might not be as good and might be a distraction. On the other side, you know, it also adds prestige if you can get that far. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on the Conference League. How did your teams perform in there? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!